draining your balls. Magic and then drain your balls. Yeah, stop draining. You're, you're worried about our balls. Think about your own balls. I thought we were going. About balls street. I thought, are, we, are we going? Oh, we are. See? So, so you two need to do who's a Who's the bit? expert here? But you're, that, by you saying that, it sounds like we were planning it. We're not planning it. It's natural. This is it's a really natural thing, man. Matt, Just relax. What? what? We've got Lawrence McKenna. Who? Like, true Geordie's best mate. True Geordie's best mate? Yeah. So are you two doing a little opening bit that you always do where you try and make it sound as casual as possible? Yeah. Yeah. We're usually alone yeah. when we're yeah. doing it. Yeah, what's that, Flav? Yeah, we've got a load of great reviews this week. Yeah, yeah, wicked. Oh, cool. Uh, funny little story, witty little banter, the long <laughs> street. <laughs> living it long, living it long. And then it goes, oh, welcome oh. back, guys. I've got a guest this week, Huddersfield. Yeah, Matt, in a minute. And uh, ooh, He's just done the whole podcast. Intense moment, intense moment. Ooh, bit where we have a little bit of thought. Matt reflects on fan channels yet again. Somehow managed to spoon it into the conversation. The bit where we come out that side. The guest gets a bit of a say. This was great. See you next week. The Long, long Ball, Ball Street. We don't, long. We, we don't need to do it now. He's just done the whole podcast. You like turn off now, go maybe do something okay. else if you, if you like. Um, I like that. That was, that's was, quite good. It was, that's probably our best episode. I used to like the bit where Matt would shout the bits where it's like, it makes you pregnant and stuff. And that was always what? funny. What was that bit? That it's, it's 99% proven to make you stronger. Oh, I can You have been it. listening. From the very beginning, mate. I yeah. love that. It's I in my top three podcasts. Do you know what, is Flav? It? Flav, it's, it's it? always it great really? when you meet a fan. I love that. Yeah, so I'm a massive fan of podcasts and you guys are up there. All I'd say is just normalise your audio in post. We can't talk at the same Time. Yeah. We know it's it. in my top three, yeah. What really? What what else yeah. do you listen to? Uh just sometimes you just listen to white noise. What <laughs> but, like, but seriously guys, we, I don't know I never know whether or what I'm doing is any good. Great interview. Yeah. Okay. And, and That's why you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> and also That's why the game loves your kid. Yeah. You? But you just say so that's a really nice thing. Yeah, I know. Well it well, goes unless you're lying. You're no, lying. no, I'm not. I'm saying it's a it's a good podcast. There's I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a podcast at least two, three podcasts a day. Really? Yeah. I love On The Media is the best podcast. That's right. great. Oh, you were right. telling me about that. Really good. It's about, it's about, uh, it's, yeah, it's really, really good. Um, what else do I listen to that I really enjoy? I like the Football Ramble. I think Football Ramble is excellent. Mm. Uh, front Three. What's that? Uh, it's like a little football podcast that I do. Some of it. I, I like the Front Three. I listen to it. Because I know nothing about football. I know about great. football fan culture. You know, birds, tits, football. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bracket. Very rare that Do we go down mean? that route. I shouldn't say that. Podcast. That's a joke, obviously. Yeah. The I'm Guardian will pick up on that. They'll be slating you next week, mate. Stereotypical stuff. But what I'm saying is what I get my knowledge from the front three. Really? Yeah, I do. My Limited. No, well, Kristen Hennage. Yeah. Oh, no. He knows his yeah. stuff. Libero. Libero. Mm. Let, let it go. Just let's release this dove of a podcast and see what happens. Mm. Let's just let this puppy breathe. The long ball. Do you do that live every week? Or yeah, is this we, like, should uh, we do it now, you know, really? Okay, yeah, lift it long, lift long, 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 I always fast forward that bit. Really? Yeah. That's my favourite bit. You know it gets what? me into it. it gives tell, me the time. I tell you what, I have, I have a lot of our fans say that. I, I've been listening to oh, five of them. Um, peak times, Mike Skinner Ooh. and some other geezer who's not famous. Yeah. And the podcast is great, but they have no intro. They just go straight into it. It's really hard to tell what episode you're listening to. Mm. Without a jingle, for some reason, maybe we've got to think about that. Maybe we'll, we'll, we can be at the front of that. I love the bits that you guys always no, say at the beginning of the jingle. podcast. You guys always go, oh, we, we do this bit for you guys now. Like last week you went, oh, this bit's just for you guys. Well, it was. Yeah. It was just it for was. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't it? You're the dedicated ones. You're the ones who listen every joke? week. Is yeah. that an insult? Mm. Are you insulting us? Why are you coming in here and being a, being a dickhead? Stop being a dickhead. <laughs> Why is he being a dick? Press Why stop. is he being a dick? Is that Press right? stop. Cane him in the comments. Press right? stop. He's Limit not on. as good as his girlfriend. I mean, I, I like what you said that Craig is doing the man of the jobs of four men, four or five men. Four or yeah, five yeah. Men so he's visual mixing. He's he's got the sound. He's in monitoring the sound there as well. That's normally put to a man who gets paid at least four times just what Craig gets paid just for him, his own job. All right. This is Ball Street, mate. You're not yeah, like yeah. A, you're, you're, you're not yeah. Ball Street. Exactly. Yeah. So any, any, look, long. what what's just happened here is mm. that Flav's come in wearing a cardigan. Well, okay. all smart. And then Lawrence has come in and bullied him to take off the cardigan. So I put my like cardigan on. on. I like this cardigan. It's nice. It's all right. And and last week I looked what makes so. You think that? I looked so small. I thought I'd wear something that makes me look a little bit more wamp. But uh, so what? Wamp. <laughs> like a bit wedge. 
you yeah. know. So you can't like just a say block words. of cheese. Yeah, yeah. Well, you definitely look like a block of cheese, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then you come in and mm. dig me out for my shirt. People yeah. all day at work going, "Why you got a shirt on?" People have been saying that the shirts that you look like Lawrence. Yeah. yeah. He's the first thing he said when he came in was that. Well, it's because you stood up. You stood opposite me. You tried to copy my stance. You've essentially <laughs> tried to take my hair. What the fuck? You've essentially tried to take it. And I just, hang on a minute. Why? Because, okay, the comments last week, a lot of the things that were said were that we look alike. Apparently so. They were saying, is, are they brothers? I also get the same thing with him. Are yeah. they boyfriends? Wow. Well, you two they, would make very cute, a very cute couple. We'd, our babies if we had test tubes, yeah. baby. Not test tube, but that's not yeah, what yeah. it's called anymore, but it no, is, it is essentially. Yeah, yeah. Where it's you, a test tube. Well, anyway, the... Um, yeah, we would have identical children to the way we look now. <laughs> I always find it funny that every week that Craig tells me he has to cut the first take of uh, Talking Balls every week because you go, hi everyone, I'm Lawrence. Fuck. And that's <laughs> every week he tells me you do that. Uh, I think I think it's all nonsense. Everything that's coming out here is nonsense. But but is this a departure from me? Because people are saying, is it Flav and Flav 2? You look great. Is this why you've now gone Cut. all smart? <laughs> you look like Keanu Reeves. I, I, well, no. I that's you do. What does Keanu Reeves look like? Have you ever seen Keanu Reeves when he's not watching mo- doing movies? Yeah, he's sort he's of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really nice. Do you know? I do look. I look an absolute mess right now. No, you this don't. Is, no I do. This is uh, look at the state. You know what I mean? I, I look. Why have bad. you grown your hair out? That's what I want to know. I honestly have been trying to get to the hairdressers for a little while. What, like two years? Yeah, like two years. No, I've been I've been growing it, and it's just kind of you know you get lazy. But does, does your missus, other half like it? No, my missus hates it. She's saying to me, just but I'm one it. of these people that when someone says cut your hair I yeah. don't like it I'm like well mm. actually I think that I'm now going to keep my hair long and do it when I want to cut do you it look like, do you think it's because you look a bit like Zlatan that is partly oh. why <laughs> um, when you let it down does it look like a mane no it looks like Kurt Cobain I did some snatch out with it it yeah. looks ridiculous oh, I like that I like Kurt, well, it Kurt looks Cobain ridiculous. looks um, never again will someone say that sentence uh, I look a bit like Kurt Cobain I did some snapchat with it. <laughs> 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 no that, but that's what that's what people say uh, yeah, one, no, wait, no. people were calling it <laughs> what I didn't like was Matt 1 and Matt 2 rather than Flav 1 and Flav 2 yeah, yeah. that was me so we thought you, that was you they said Flav 1 and Flav 2 and I was like more like so Matt what, what, what if you mixed your names Loz. Mav Flat. Well, Mav is much cooler, isn't it? Yeah, Maverick. But flat, flat is a kind of. Yeah, flat is a word. Mav <laughs> is also a word. No, but yeah, flat, flat the, is a place place that you live. Sure. It's a type of coffee. It's a home. Yeah, but Mav is like Maverick, like the Dallas Maverick, yeah, like the Dallas true. Mavs. Or Maverick off Top Gun. Or Maverick or, off Top Gun, which yeah. makes you goose. And and when there's quite a lot of. No, it makes homo- you goose if we're Mav. Homo. No, it makes me Rice or whatever his name. What they all died, didn't they? So it yeah. doesn't matter. Let's move, <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. So are we couldn't make America great again. <laughs> they tried. Oh, and that, that fortunately, fundamentally, <laughs> that led to the election of Donald Trump <laughs> was the, the failure in Top Gun to address <laughs> male sexuality in, within the, the community. Did yeah. you see John Salako's tweet? No. He what said, did he say? He said, "No oh, one follows John yeah. Salako." Right? <laughs> Stop <laughs> trying to make it happen. Yeah. Who? How many people follow John Salako? I want to find out. Find well, out. His Twitter account should be called "Who's Who Is John Salako." <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone following me anymore? Uh, John Salaki said he would have voted. He voted for Brexit. He would have voted for Trump, and now he's voting for Gareth Southgate. Mm. It's time for people that don't have a clue to have a go at stuff. Don't let him anywhere near Periscope. No, yeah? oh, he's dangerous man. on a live stream. That guy. So yeah. he's dangerous on the wing. Was John Salaki actually? Yeah. He, in fact, he crossed the one right of the balls wing. for. Um, he crossed one of the balls for righty for the. He might have done both actually for mm. when he's you know the. 89 whatever it was cup final when he yeah, came yeah. off the bench and why didn't he play in one more game John Salako it's yeah. a good point yeah I mean I, there's know, a few there's... Robbie Fowler got in touch and said I want to play in one more game no. and sadly he was, he was playing golf in Dubai brilliant that's well, yeah. sad actually he would have been there incredible there were, there were a couple of others that says I want to play in one more game desperate to play in one more game um, yeah how much money do I get sure. <laughs> exactly. or as we call it Wembley Cup 1.0 yeah. yeah. Is that what, what you call ours? What, yeah, 1.0. Yeah. Oh, and what's the Wembley Cup then? Well, that's what Spencer does now. So that's, that's, right. that's uh, one more game, 2.0. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying Spencer ripped it off. I'm just no, saying no, like, he didn't rip the, it off. the first people... Spencer just... was going to play in, in one more he game, was, yeah. actually. Yeah, but yeah. He, the thing happened with the Wembley Cup, and that is brilliant. You know? Go and see that video online. Not the Wembley Cup. But that's a great video, but uh, the one more game one. Really well directed. Yeah. It really, and uh, beautifully edited. Flavi's frustrated here yeah. because we keep dancing around. We all need to calm We're down. We're supposed to be relax. bickering. No, right? this, is good, this is good podcasting. I'm yeah. fully happy with this. Well, you don't look at Flavi. It's written all over Stop your face. Stop saying that. Every time you talk to me, it's like I'm, I'm grimacing. 
Um, Maybe you, you wanted me and me and Lance to not <laughs> argue, and then here you are. What's, are you all right, mate? Oh, I had the bad news about my cat this morning. Really? Yeah, well, not really bad. It's just that he's moved out, isn't he? What? <laughs> smudge has moved out. You left a note or something. You left a smudge on well, the, the side. The neighbours he's moved in with, they left a note saying, you got to get this rid of this fucking cat. Really? Yeah, it's shitting everywhere. What? And I don't know what to do with it because he doesn't want to live with me. S- smudge doesn't. No, Smudge wants to be, he Not doesn't want to be here. So I'm going to put him in a cat box and take him somewhere he doesn't like. <laughs> Where to do? Take him to Stu's house. You're going to take him to Wiltshire. He really? Yeah, he's going to live in Swindon. Which is lovely. Yeah, he's nice. Yeah. It's where my girlfriend lives. Yeah, no, I'm going to spell Solarco. Yeah, John Solarco. Um, do, Sol- this whole thing about us looking like each other, Matt. Yes. Do you remember when we went to France? Not together, not like that. No, okay. I mean, that's well, fine as well. I've been to France on Ball Street's dollar. Well, it sure. wasn't on a dollar. We, oh, well, I suppose it was the same. Yeah, it was. Well, well, do you know it wasn't? Do you know what? I paid for that whole thing. Did you really? I paid for that whole thing. You didn't tell me that. And uh, the company haven't paid me back for that. And they walked. I don't claim as the owner of the company. company. Why not? It, it was a it was a grand basically. Oh that. my god! Yeah. Really? Why but it's, you know, not so, that I'm rich, but when this? This was in. Uh, it's when we did the writer podcast. Check it out. That was a great. Podcast, yeah, that was actually. a great. Podcast. It really opened yeah. up. It was a brilliant podcast. One of my proudest moments working in media. You couldn't. No, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I made him apologise for all the bad stuff he'd done to me as a child. <laughs> as a child, yeah. not like that. In fact, that was great when he actually says, Flav, see all them bad things I did? Yeah. But in, on the football pitch, I was just doing my job. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that is good. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Yeah, it was great. I, I loved it. And actually, I, I never really had much time for Ian Wright, obviously, because it's part of my partisanship that doesn't allow me to, but I liked him a lot. Would you have liked him as a... Imagine him and Les Ferdinand or someone up front. That would be incredible, wouldn't it? No, I'm not. They, they, they must have played a bit for England, perhaps, or... Maybe. They mm. might... They that would have been a pairing, though. They're both uh, number nines, yeah. though, aren't they? So well... I know, but number nines that appreciate each other. <laughs> like oh, who? Yeah. Give us two other number nines that appreciate each other. Uh, Robbie Fowler and... Owen. Michael Owen. Michael Owen. Okay. For a little while, maybe yeah, they, they could have played together. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, a number 10 who, who all number nines appreciated, Teddy Sheridan. Yes. Actually, oh, Andy R- Cole and Dwight York were essentially number nines. That's that true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, Wrighty, um, who I think that when he was at Arsenal, Teddy was at Spurs mm-hmm. and Teddy was at Millwall a bit during it. And he actually, um, he said that there was this, because they were both kind of out and about in London, there was this big tension and stuff like that and they'd never met. You and feel then, it from, from New Cross all the way yeah. to where. <laughs> but but no, there was a bit of a, te- I don't know what life was like, but I remember him telling me this story and basically he said they saw each other in, in, a, in a club like on, on a Saturday night out and he uh, just went straight over they just both kind of saw each other and just walked up to each other mm. and then just had this big fucking was hug, that a this big hug uh, no this is um, Teddy Sheringham Teddy Sheringham and, right. and uh, basically so since then he, him and Teddy really good pals loves Teddy and actually when we were before one more game we were we were just driving mm. in the car one time and I was like cool, who would you actually out of anybody that you'd like to play like who would that one person be? And I was thinking Burkham, Adams, and stuff like that. And he went, you know what? Keon. Fucking oh. Teddy, fucking <laughs> sharing him. Do you know? It was at that time, both of them were going at it, weren't they? In the league, mm. for the top goal scorer, obviously, and right, used to nick it. But it was really important to me as a child to have our striker, Tottenham striker, as, as the top goal scorer in the league. I don't know why it was kind of the most important thing at the time. Mm. Um, and Sheringham did it, I think, one season. Lineker did it, but right, more or less, was, oh, the, yeah. was the one. I, I, Teddy Sharing when he first went on Twitter, was quite funny just he didn't really know what DMs were <laughs> so instead of DMing he was just adding <laughs> yeah. alright darling nice yeah. tits and yeah alright darling not spoken in a while let's go for yeah. a drink but he yeah. did this with multiple people oh fuck in a it's row a numbers game, it was fantastic it's it really a numbers is. Game. you know what not many people check your timeline so <laughs> he, probably, he probably got away with it yeah, with some people I once did an interview with Teddy Sheringham and he seemed like a lovely guy but all the way through the interview and this was at TalkSport actually I went in and I had to commentate with him on a match? On a, my, one of my favourite England goals. Okay. And uh, and then afterwards got to interview him and all the time he just read Nuts magazine. <laughs> Refused to yeah. look up Nuts He's magazine. He's probably going, what's her Twitter? What's it? Twitter? Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, He's just, <laughs> just DMing. <laughs> well, for later. Not, not quite DMing. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I played poker with Teddy for about 10 hours as well. I bet he? he's got a great poker face, hasn't he? Yeah, he was, he was good. He yeah, plays tight. Was very good? tight. Yeah, he was good. We were both in the latter stages of the EPT London first place, cool million. Uh, he finished. How much did you win? I won about twenty grand. Oh, did he, you really? He, he, yeah, he he went out one place before me, and we'd been sitting playing. When it comes to the bubble, right, which is so in a poker tournament, there might be say a thousand people might play in it, mm-hmm. right, and the top ten percent will get paid, for yeah. example. So as you start to get near the, the bubble, right, 
it's kind of um, it gets tense as fuck because mm. you don't want to have played for four days and then go out and at least if you get into that hundred that's when you cash then it starts to loosen up again mm. now um, yeah but um, and, and they start to go hand to hand at a certain point because obviously if I'm sitting there going oh I can't make up my mind just looking around to see other people go out of the tournament oh, so they, they start to go hand for hand so you'll sit and have one hand the whole floor will play that hand Brilliant. and then they'll kind of play the next hand and you know wait to see for someone to go out so we were both kind of quite short stacked sitting next to each other and and we'd been playing for about 10 hours that day and um you just gnawing his ear off about ball street so we come on sometimes we'll, we'll, no, i was at talk spot at the time. So yeah. it was, it was, it was, i was at talk spot at the time and i was actually having to go on the radio and do interviews into the radio and ultimately into the radio <laughs> he got home he was talking <laughs> at the radio he was he was playing for so long <laughs> People like matt what are you doing it's one way and i'm like no it's not I'm just, right so adrian, next. adrian. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, um, and anyway, we, we then ended up getting moved, the bubble had gone, um, another 40 yeah. places went, and I saw Teddy um, get knocked out, and he, I felt, because we, we'd kind of bonded about it, and then I saw him get knocked out, and, and I went out moments later. See you later, Teddy. Oh, no. Yeah. Do you think that was because you were so upset about Teddy that you no, lost your call? it was because I fucking ran into pocket aces. Um, we always run into Table, yeah, yeah I, won't, I won't go into details of poker. I, I, I've run into a couple of pocket aces on a night out. Yeah. Um, oh, what, yeah. what was your favourite goal? Greco mm. terms. What was my favourite goal? Mm. Oh yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go and listen to the Michael Greco. Well, um, <laughs> that was actually a good podcast. It was quite interesting. I, 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 came, I came expecting to hear about you know Chelsea. Next thing, no, <laughs> no, didn't hear anything about Chelsea really. Yeah, you're in that podcast. What Ten, did you hear about? Like forty five minutes about pocket aces <laughs> and, what's, and what's the best hand in poker and that stuff. That was the best. Yeah, it was very true. handy. It made me want to do like a Ball Street poker tournament. Yeah, that would be good. A that live stream almost. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be good. I've seen people play poker together. But Boring. It it's not good for friendships. Um, it would be amazing. Imagine that on Ball. What Street. was your favourite goal? What was the goal you had to do? I think it was Michael Owen against. Uh, Michael Owen against Argentina. So it wasn't like the ones that Sheringham scored, which is probably no. That was the thing was I was giving a list of Sheringham goals and then one like one Michael Owen goal. I was like, I'll do the Michael Owen goal. That was right, his favourite goal, uh, uh, favourite ever England moment. Yeah, and the, the funny amazing. thing is for that, so that was ninety eight, and actually, right, he had been told by Glenn Odell who was the gaffer. Yeah, yeah. Right, he was going to be going to the tournament, yeah. playing. It was in one of the friendlies beforehand. I think it was his hamstring maybe. Mm. And Owen essentially then cemented his spot. Mm. So then right, he not played in a World Cup I mean let's face it that would be fairly devastating and actually his favourite moment was, was what Michael Owen did which I think is quite a nice little it's quite a father figure he's right yeah. Yeah. yeah he's a good man um, so, so we were talking about being um, in France yeah so this is because we, we've got it's I don't weird. know what it is but we're it looks sort of like each other that's it we are beautiful we're I mean, not beautiful this is, beautiful, this is right? a not. triumvirate of I mean, sex I mean obviously this gets sex, you where you want to go yeah, does it? No. Yeah. Where do you want to go? Would be and my use question. Use that face. when you get there. Yeah. yeah. This is an audio thing as well. Like you just said this happens to be a video, but yeah. you're now using your these, video. These are. Yeah. Um, that's true. We, we're confused. So we, we were watching. This. We were in the in the fan park. I'm talking to radios for crying out loud. <laughs> it's just over. <laughs> yeah. We were at the fan park, weren't we? And um, this we, this gentleman of, of we, we significant age, France. Fran yeah, it was France, Algeria. I think. Yeah. The fan park. Did you go to a fan park? No. So it was good, man. That was good. I quite liked it. Especially when England fan turns up, and this but this geezer comes up to us, and people aren't approaching strangers and chatting to them. Not no, the so and we're sitting down, I hope. a lager, um, casually in between games. Yeah. Very hot day it was, and this guy just comes up, doesn't he? This French guy, yeah, in in in, in, in France, in tiny ripped jean shorts. Yeah, mm. we've all been there. Well, comes up and he's just like, "Hey guys, <laughs> can't do the accent." Yeah. Yeah, that's more or less what it sounded like. Is he Australian? Yeah. I don't know what he was. Indian. Oh, guys. He was Indian. Dubious yeah. is what he was. And yeah. he, what's it? he was just he, kind he, of. He said, "I've got a flat, two hundred yards down the road. Just How about last free, go and get some chicks." <laughs> Brilliant. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck!" I like, was like, "Shit!" I'm sorry. We we really need to watch this. Uh, we're supposed to be at work. What time's Algeria <laughs> start? I just yeah. need to. Uh, <laughs> Very weird. Let me go back to this guy's flat where mm. I end up in a sand bath. Chopped up. Yeah. Where's my liver, Matt? Well, no. <laughs> I took my penis. <laughs> Put it on your head. Yeah. <laughs> you got liver on the brain. Yeah, that was odd. But that's yeah. us desperately trying to get back to the running order. Which yeah. I mean, you guys should have just said, and then we could have easily led it back because that was a boring Loss. story, essentially, wasn't it? <laughs> Loz. Loz. You're, you're, you've been in, in, in the industry quite a while. You're yeah. such a young man, 21. You might say I'm preeminent. 
no. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a personal in joke. That was that's yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great for yeah. everyone. Uh, the uh, yeah, so you you you've been in the industry for a long time. Yeah, you've done a lot of stuff. Most people now know you for the stuff you've done in the True Joy podcast. And may really? I say, may I say, I'd say so. I, no, I think may I say actually that I, I, it takes me a lot to get into podcasts. Mm -hmm. I produce podcasts myself, and I'm always a little bit bitter and Loosely. a little a little bit bitter and of other people's other people's success. So I actually listen to the True Joy podcast. Do you really? I do. I listen to it. I love it. I absolutely love it, and I love it mostly because. Mm -hmm. Uh, of your 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 relationship, yeah, the yeah. way the way you interact with each other, and it's quite sweet. It is nice. It's mm. really nice. And the first thing I the first thing I heard, or the first everyone who know, listens to the podcast knows that uh, Jody's kind of his his way with women. Mm. Yeah, yeah, which is is kind of part of the appeal to some of the audience. I think so. But your job. <clears throat> Too many cricket, almost. Yeah, <laughs> which, <laughs> which yeah, yeah. It's, you're, you're the foil. You're the voice of reason. You're, you're the decent human being. Type yeah, yeah. Thing. And I think, I think it works quite well for that reason. I, what, what worries me is that people, people on YouTube. So uh, on YouTube, everyone thinks that you're being yourself. Uh, who watches? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And some people who watch will know that's not or a hundred. They'll know that I'm very relaxed, but that's not like I play a bit of a character almost. You yeah, know? yeah. So it's entertainment. It's en it's entertaining. And this everyone, isn't, but that yeah, might be. <laughs> so everyone sort of plays their role, do you yeah. know. And everyone knows me that I like to laugh and joke and stuff. But sometimes I be quite serious or sort of take things quite seriously. Some people since doing that podcast just think I'm like a really like an activist almost for women's rights because <laughs> I've replied to Geordie on very small subjects uh, you know about like you shouldn't talk about women like that and people are like oh, it's, it's social justice warriors what are they called <laughs> but just for saying to him political it, correctness gone mad yeah, probably probably best not yeah. to talk about a woman like that you know i mean let's not define her by whether she has hair or not on her vagina do you know what i mean <laughs> that's not a way to define a person great can we just cut the word that yeah, I mean, yeah, China. Out. This isn't a lot. Yeah, <laughs> are you, are you, do you not like that? I don't like that either. It's, it's just not. It's, it's a little not, bit of sick up. It's not on Ball Street. Yeah. You know, keep uh, that to your own. A bit keep that to your own podcast. Keep mate, that to yeah. your own podcast, okay, mate. Not the um, v one. I brought some great stories for you guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't really. Uh, but my, the, point, the point is, it's a really good. It's a. It's it. We've called it like educating Geordie. Do you know? Like I'm slowly turning him towards this way, and I. I it's begin to become clear that he's like he's almost slightly changed his views a little. When bit. when you listen when you listen to it from the very first episode up until to now, to, 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 I've listened to every minute. Is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, you wow. can see it in the same way that like, like characters in Walking Dead develop. Mm -hmm. Geordie is developing in that way as well. That's not to say that he, the way he views the world is wrong. No, it's just a way, and the way you do is a way. And I actually enjoy all of that podcast, and I enjoy both sides uh, very much so. But I enjoy it because. There's two of you on it, what? Uh, and you're both offering two. So yin and yang. Yeah. What, yeah. what I find and quite it's a hard weird about relationship. As well. It is definitely a weird relationship. You but, shouldn't but, like each other from the outside. Yeah, that's what everyone says. That's but what I find quite weird. You genuinely do as well. Do you think I was chatting to someone last night and um, uh, Nick Morales, who's like a quite a young journalist, he's really good, knows his stuff, and he was asking. He said to me, like, do you do you struggle with what he says? And I said part of the reason that I agreed to be on the podcast was because I thought like there's not enough debate out there between someone like me and someone like Jordy mm. and it tends to be that like I'll hang around with a load of leftist people or whatever and we'll all agree and he'll hang, <laughs> hang out with all his mates and they'll all agree and part of the problem part of the American election was that neither side really mixed and so when it came down to it the polls everyone read the polls for however they wanted but no one really went to the other side and said how do you guys feel about this and so when you get Jordy and I we sort of there's like a mutual appreciation of the way that the other one thinks in that yeah. sense and I think a lot of people are more than willing to sort of put one in the box and put the other in the box. But actually, both of us appreciate box. the actual person. Yeah, well, yeah. The, yeah, the actual person it. on the other side. You know what I mean? And it, so that's quite interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. I find that a very interesting. It's like it, it's it, not yin and yang in it, that sense. It reminds me actually of um, of university and when you actually kind of because I was a northerner that kind of went to so the university I. and then you meet kind of these people from different areas and. You know, and there is that whole cultural kind of difference that Where goes on. Where are you on. from again? H uh, I'm from West Yorkshire, right, so okay. a place called Wakefield. I'm yeah. a Huddersfield Town fan, but yeah, yeah born in Wakefield. Yeah. How long again. did that take? Yeah. Yeah. What? yeah. I mean, I bought it up. You've got what. Huddersfield in out again, haven't you? Yeah. They're not going for the league anymore. You don't have to keep mentioning Huddersfield. You've done it. Again. You guys not going for the league anymore? Of course we are. But you're minus one and third. How does that happen, by the way? Yeah, that's minus a good point. what? One goal difference. Yeah, you're third and minus one goal difference. That is incredible. 
I can see that there's a genuine bit of irritation in, in Matt's eyes here. Of course there is. Cause, Why? Because of other... Because you're trying to... You're touching <laughs> me for a start. Yeah. Don't touch me. Why do you like being touched? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I do. Excuse. Can I just say, uh, for anyone who doesn't know Matt, there's a guy, a, a really great producer called Pete Givens, who used to work on early Ball Street shows. I like, was mm. the producer of all the early Ball Street shows. Yeah. Matt and him were very touchy feely to the point where uh, oh. I remember once. Where being, are we going with this? I remember once being in. We just finished the first ever shoot at Wembley. You're like, where's Matt and Pete? With right. <laughs> we're just both naked, we were it, wriggling around on the floor. What's he talking about? Oh. It's a wrestle close to that right they're having it that we go over to the Hilton that's opposite to edit in the Hilton that's right and that we're all editing in a suite in the Hilton Shit. and there's me and another guy called Tom and that's, that's about right. it and then out of nowhere I just hear bang <laughs> and it's Matt on the floor in a headlock <laughs> no it's not in a you're headlock you're in a headlock with a, this massive guy called Pete on top of you putting you in a headlock and you're going I'm not and Pete's like come on that tap is. out tap out and Matt's like I'm not I'm not in walks the woman she goes can I take your orders <laughs> both of you refuse to leave that position yeah. you made an order <laughs> for food from the position of yeah. a headlock alright <laughs> so one that's partly true no, but, no no it is but I was not in a headlock you were Gibbo's a bit he's six foot four he's a beast he's, mass, and he he's was, a beast he was of much man. heavier at that time as well yeah he was yeah. much heavier at that time so this is like Conor McGregor we might talk about it in a bit mm. fighting in against Daniel Cromier in sure. terms of uh, uh, size. I, I loved his his uh, rally game a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, That's he's a light, light heavyweight champ. Yeah. Yeah, um, so it's like them two fighting, right? He's a bigger guy. However, with superior technique, which I clearly have, mm -hmm. um, I actually got the better of all them exchanges. No, I, I did. The, I know that there's no chance that that didn't him. Given the fact that the we amount are. of wrestle, not yeah. we have. I like you, a wrestle. With everybody. Everybody. It's it's so fun. Fun. That's hilarious. Uh, right, anyway, let's so, go sorry, back to so this yeah, shit. So the so podcast so is a massive <laughs> raving success. Yeah, it is. Great. It Can't was wait for the mail to pick up on one line that we have and destroy us. No, yeah. no, you don't, that doesn't destroy you. That makes you. That's what you got aim for. It's a good point, actually. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it makes true Jordy. I don't know what it does for your career. Yeah, ruins me. Yeah, pretty um, much. Um, but yeah, an amazing success. And I love the dialogue. And I love the fact that you're genuinely friends that comes across. Yeah. And if you, there's a lot of, Tense, there's a lot of pretending on YouTube and all television that they are oh, we're friends, we're close friends. Like, you can hear it in, in, in the way you talk. We actually do get that he would well. probably die for you. We call each other almost daily, actually, and have little, little like twenty minute, half an hour conversation. That's really, really nice. What you doing? What you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. What you wearing? Out. And sometimes we'll get a bit angry when the other one doesn't pick up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I called you three times. Are you out? I'm not even joking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Who yeah. you meet? Ball Street. Oh, yeah. All right. You're not yeah. with Spencer, are you? Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna do a podcast with Spencer, not are you? Again. Not yeah. Again. <laughs> but the, uh, the, I mean, the, the whole, because you, you're almost portrayed like I've not, I've not. Um, Actually, I only have a, 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 a certain amount of bandwidth because I'm having yeah. a baby. I have to go to NCT classes, tons of stuff, raising money, loads of business stuff that's going on. So I, I, I don't, um, no, I, I don't listen. I've kind of watched bits of it on <laughs> on, on the video and. Um, I, but what I have seen, I really like that kind of that, that, that cultural mix, and it is a beautiful thing because. But you're actually because you're portrayed almost as a southerner, but you're from Burton, right? But I was, I grew, uh, How long have you been down here? And, like and eight years now. Eight years. Oh, actually, maybe a little bit longer, like eight, nine years, nine mm. years almost. Um, and I. You love London. Don't I you? love London. Well, but I've always wanted the, to live in London. I've right. got a question. You know? how, how do you how do you feel about kind of leaving the north but being rejected by the south? No, um, being you, rejected by the North and then being rejected by the so, South. Yeah, like, um, so. so if I go back to Liverpool or I cover Liverpool, people always go, where's his Liverpool accent? Why He's not yeah. a true Liverpool fan. Yeah. And then you come to London and people are like, oh, you support Liverpool, you don't belong in London. Yeah. And you know, you're, I think you stick out so much. Like I, I could go out on the street now in London and point out to you which guys have lived in London for over five years or have grown up in London and which people have just fresh off the boat down to the south. Because mm. you can just tell, even from the, from the cut of people's jeans, mm. northerners just wear baggy jeans. Do you know? <laughs> like They just have no idea. Either either too baggy or too tight. And I went through years of baggy jeans, tight jeans, baggy jeans, tight tight jeans. Um, and it was it was fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a story. But the, there is a, it is really different. And I, I mean, I'm... Um, I love the north. I love going back up there, but it, it is mad. I went up there the um, a little while ago. Me and my missus went up, and we were just having food with my uh, my parents. <laughs> and they were like, "So there's a pub called the Vine Tree, which was our local pub." And then you go to the quiz every Tuesday, and they're just like, "Oh," and I've not been up for a while. Like, the Vine Tree's changed. Now it's this Italian restaurant. It's really good. It's beautiful. We'll go there for lunch. Can I, I like, just say every every place in the north you go to has a place which either is 
vine or like so the vine tree yeah. we've got this and then you've got a pub named after a king and that's you've got a choice of those two and then the bull's head yeah. you know and and that's all you've got when you go to any northern town or city those yeah. are the three places you get they've also got great ones like the pot oil yeah exactly uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. pot it's, oil oh, it's, uh, really but, but the, so, so we go in there and this is this is the difference between the north and the south pretty much because we're in there right having dinner and my dad's like oh by the way right you know before you go is she pregnant <laughs> no, there's, you can't mistake that. But he's like, before you go, right, check out the uh, check out the toilet. Like, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, like literally, best toilet you'll ever see. A like, toilet. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, all right, a bit weird, but don't need to go. And and I'm like, I don't need to. He's like, Look, honestly, go. They're amazing. <laughs> toilets. So, weird. Your hotel so, is something so incredible. I go in there, right, and you know, I've I've been in the odd nice toilets, mm. the odd nice mix. What you know, mirror. I don't know yeah. where where you. Mirror. Just, you <laughs> no, no, no. Where it's entirely okay. like all these kind of nice designs. And you know, it's like a waterfall taps. Waterfalls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those. You, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of the world. Yeah. I'm in and and. Good waterfall. I, I, my expectations were quite high. Went in there. It's pretty much like the Wall Street toilet, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is not a nice toilet. Just clean, yeah. Just, as, yeah. As, clean. But, but my dad described that as beautiful. Beautiful. But I was I was chatting yeah. about this this to Jed right, and and the way Jed being you, upstairs, Jed Mark's upstairs who, who's working. been we in. We don't all work at Wall Street. Then. No, but but Jed who's uh, no, but they, Jed's been on a few videos. Oh, he he's the big guy in the in the. You decide little but, versus and, large. And he's also in, yeah. he's the third choice goalkeeper in Bull Street FC. Third choice keeper. It's also uh, fair to say that the majority of the listeners to this podcast probably are in the office anyway. So like, yeah. Oh, that's unnecessary. Jed's been or on the... guest. Je- yeah. Please <laughs> behave like a guest yeah. or you'll be asked to leave. I've had this with another company this week. Jed's been on the podcast as well. <laughs> Great but, but But Jed's got an amazing... Jed works at TalkSpot as well, right? And um, he'd been working with this guy on this presentation. And then the guy's like, right, let's have a meeting on Friday. And, and, and Jed's like... I can't. I'm on. I'm on my way to. A, <laughs> I'm on my way to a uh, to a stag do. So I'm, I'm off. You know, off way with the lads. And he's like, oh, cool. All right. Where are you going? He's like Portugal. He's like, ah, anywhere near Abafuera. No. Jed's like, as a matter of fact, oh. yes, it is. And he goes, all right. Well, um, what you need to do, head to the old town. There's this big, big flight of stairs like that. If you go down those st- over them stairs, down onto the beach, just just by the beach there. For toilet. There's the most beautiful old house you've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> Jed's like. What, and this what? is right in front of you in the whole office. It's just like, what? You know what I mean? A, a why beautiful. Oh, why, wow. why has he told him that information? What is it about Jed that makes him think he'd like the brass? Yeah. He was like, oh, you, was the only way you're going to get laid is essentially through money. He's massive. I mean, isn't he, yeah. That's so. Is, is he, I mean, no, he has got, he's got a, a beautifully beautiful partner. So We're saying true. beautiful a lot. So hang on, we've just been saying how beautiful can be used. In no, our beautiful. What are you saying about Jed's missus? Because she, she is, is gorgeous. Stunning. Really? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen it. Um, it was it a beautiful <laughs> whole house? <laughs> I don't know. All oh, right, okay. I don't know, I'm I'm assuming there. that you, I'm you took the first flight over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Matt's already yeah. halfway out the door. I'm off where I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he's never been to a whole house. I look like Flav, mate. I don't need to pay for any of that. Good point. Yeah. Pocket AC is bad, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Um, you were getting 20 grand. I don't know what that is. What is going on? Don't know. Okay. Uh, right, so you. Next, uh, next, next question. Next question. Mm-hmm. On to the next one. Yeah. Online football fans. Yeah. Like, so we were talking about earlier, very funny, very weird thing. There's two types, there's three types of football fans. There's the ones that don't use the internet. Mm-hmm. There's ones that do use, use the yeah. internet and then there's a hybrid. Yeah. So I'm in the hybrid. I do use the, the internet. Well, um, I, I mean, look, obviously these aren't such distinct groups that you only go to the match. You don't use the internet on that side. And on this end of the spectrum, you only use online. But I think it's just how the, the world's evolved. Like when I was young, a mm. um, long, long time ago, many, mm. many moons ago. Before uh, the radio. Before the radio. <laughs> we used to be able to talk into radios, but <laughs> the radio was not. It was amazing. CB but, radio. But fan currency, right, was essentially based on if you went to the games. Okay. So like Bitcoin. There'd be people that go to the games and they'd have a season ticket, you'd, you, or even, you know, you'd, you'd travel all the way, and that was your kind of currency. So then you'd kind of maybe meet people at university, and they'd be like, they just watch it on Sky, and you're like, they don't know the what it's like. They don't know those experiences, those kind of journeys where you travel the length of the country, and you're getting pissed on, and you mm-hmm. lose five, you know, those kind of things, because a lot of people uh, had done that. So that was kind of currency in those days. And there's definitely been a, um, f- for someone like you, you know, quite a bit younger like yourself, grown up in an era where you don't need to do that because A, football's so readily available whereby I'll you be can honest, watch streams I, and stuff like that. I don't really want to do that. Like my, my thing with football is I never really was that 
into going to the games like I didn't really even like when I was a kid I wasn't desperate to get back to Anfield and mm. sort of like watch as many games at the stadium as possible so I was it I really enjoyed playing football and I really enjoyed watching it on the TV I did enjoy yeah. watching it on TV and I enjoyed oh. watching like all the big tournaments and those kind of things and I enjoyed everything sort of around it so it always made sense to me um, you know, the way that YouTube has evolved and the way that other fan cultures evolved but what's funny is that as, as it sort of evolves, and football is everywhere, so you know everyone's now got their league around the world. But as it's evolved, people now there's, there's people questioning the authenticity of you. Do you know what I mean? Mm, so yeah, how authentic is, are you as a fan? Yes. So what you've taken there is that authenticity of going to the games and those things, and that was seen as the currency. Now I don't quite know what the currency is yeah. as being an authentic it's fan. A because, it's a transition. It's I, very interesting. I stream Strange games time. illegally all the time. Mm. So does that make me less authentic as a fan because I'm not willing to pay for the product? Because there are loads of people in yeah. America who pay Fox yeah. a lot of money to be able to watch every game. Yeah. So I don't, I don't quite know what makes you an authentic fan anymore. My dad's an authentic Liverpool fan. He yeah. loves Liverpool, yeah. but he doesn't go out of his way to watch every game on Sky live, mm. mainly because I think he just feels disenfranchised from that. He doesn't really yeah. want... And actually, I don't think he likes a lot of fan culture online. He doesn't like. He's interested if Coutinho is going to leave the club, but he doesn't want five minutes of analysis from me or Flab or anyone else. He just cares if he leaves the club or not. Do you know what I mean? And they don't all think like that. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, no, but it is. It is. I mean, it is interesting, and it's really. I think that this, um, the culture around um, YouTube comments to do with fans mm. is a mad thing. You know, yeah. like you just see. Because what I love about Ball Street is that we're a collection of genuine fans, fans that go to games or fans that are passionate about it, that they that they make video on it and talk about it the whole time. And what you then get is, you know, so Ball Street isn't paid presenters that mm -hmm. are coming in it from a like a an Andy Brassel, you know, where it's almost like a neutral point of view, or even a journalist that moved but paid I, for I, a I team. Do, I feel that's a little bit unfair. And some, some no, no, you, well, you haven't. Let me get to what I'm saying, right? Is, okay, is I'm preempting it. Well, you might be wrong, so Go let's on. just wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's you, you <laughs> Come on. No, it's not. But what I'm saying is, um, what I like about Ball Street is that there's a lot of times people that are that are really Robbie's an Arsenal fan, Paul's a Liverpool fan, Ped's a you know uh, an Everton fan. Just yeah, um, finish that. Flav's a Tottenham fan, and when they're sitting there having their views and their arguments, mm -hmm. then you get people that are just kind of you, you're so fucking biased. What are you it, doing? Yeah. And it's just like he's a fucking Tottenham fan as if he's not biased in some way, shape or form, as if he's not. Now, yes, you can speak objectively. Yes, you can be critical about it, but he loves that team. So that's his passion, his opinion. You can and at least be aware of that. Do you know oh, what yeah, I mean? No, of course. Well, he is aware of that. It's not like he isn't. But all I, no, I it, it's, funny. it's not about him. What I'm saying is a lot of times in, in YouTube him, comments, is people just go mad about, about what people's views are, even though those views are inherent within their character and within their what their actual what their love is and what their passion is mm. and there seems to be a lack of unusual. tolerance or there is definitely a lack of tolerance but I also think that's because of the way that the comments and the views on YouTube are skewed so and I, you guys oh, discussed you, that? you guys discussed this last week on the podcast with Robbie is when does he get his most views and like well, what's the perception of when yeah, he gets yeah. his most views and that's when Arsenal lose or and you know you guys discussed the Guardian uh, the whole thing with the Guardian um and I, I mean if I'm completely honest I was a little bit frustrated by the Robbie podcast because I don't think you guys pressed him hard enough and I don't and as a fan I think I'm you know I'm sort of entitled to that view in that sense I think you guys could have pressed him more maybe you could have asked one or two more difficult questions um, and sort of gone a little bit further into it and that's what I question about fan culture at the moment especially about fan channels and that sort of thing is it's seen as we're giving the fans a voice and that's great. And I do think there's a real uh, merit to that. And the fans need a voice because they're not given it by the mainstream media and they really care about their voice. At the same time, though, I think there has to be, and I think this is where fan, where fan, uh, in order for everyone to sort of eat from the plate or in, in order for it to continue and be healthy, fan culture has to become a little bit more self-aware. So it cannot continue to just be rants. It cannot continue to be sort of, biased analysis I'm doing like bunny ears like biased analysis of your club so that if you go somewhere then it is just you know well we're Arsenal we're Arsenal we're Liverpool and we know what's best actually a bit of reflection and you might find that your club actually like maybe maybe you do need to massively question what your club are doing I go through that all the time in Liverpool at the moment having found out what Liverpool Football Club did to the surrounding houses mm. around Anfield making them into crack dens essentially buying houses and holding out on those people on that street that's disgusting what they did and I can't respect mm. that at all and that 
fundamentally made me question whether I wanted to go to a Liverpool game. Yeah. Because people blinded themselves to that and did not yeah. want to hear it. And yeah. I thought, well, you know what? If you're going to blind yourself to that and you're not going to listen to the fact that your club essentially starved the local area, made it into a, a drug-ridden, a violent area, then you guys seriously have to question what you're supporting. Mm. And we can talk about, oh, brands have come into the game and done this. Clubs were doing that long before. And they've been doing it for a while, and you massively do need to question the fans. Fans need a voice where someone says, now hold up, like you guys are talking shit, and you guys really need to check yourself, which is why I struggle with things like fan cams and those sort of things. Because what would really help the fans is if someone off camera went, mate, take a breath, come back to me in five minutes when you're a little bit relaxed, we don't mind about the views. If you truly cared about those people around you, you would actually say, mate, take a deep breath and come back in two minutes, we'll cut there, guys, don't worry about it. But the fact is, there are a lot of fan cams which, ex or have in the past, exploited that. And that's made some of these characters. And people say, oh, well, they, you know, they come on of their own abolition, they come on, they really want to be on. That's true. But I listened to a great podcast the other day about um, Fox News and those sorts of things. And how in the American election, <coughs> they massively skewed the way that people yeah, yeah, thought yeah. the election was going to go. Because what they found was people got like a dopamine hit from hearing those extreme views mm. and from hearing the things which essentially like reinforce what they already thought and i thought is that really affirmation the, bias is that really what I, is that really the direction that i want to go do i really want to work in an industry like that and what worries me about that is and i've had numerous conversations not just at Bull Street, other places <clears> is that if one fan channel's bad, or one channel, so that could be Ball Street, it could be Arsenal Fan TV, it could be you know Spurred On, Chelsea Fans Channel, 100% Chelsea, whatever you want to have, goes bad, it makes us all just essentially look a little bit bad, because the big brands, the people who come in, and the re part of the reason we can continue to do this will go, don't want to touch that. And it worries me a little bit, because when there are when we don't check ourselves, we, everyone looks a bit stupid. Mm. And there are times where I get very frustrated I mean, about that. I mean, look, I think that there's, you've skated across a lot of different subjects there, and I yeah. think that the way you classify things is kind of open to perspective and interpretation. Like what? Well, I don't think Ball Street is a fan channel. But it does um, represent the fan voice. No, what no, I'm but saying, no, it, no, but it, it exists just, in that spectrum. It, no, it, it does. As I said, you've skated across quite a few different bits there. I think you could call, um, I, I'd think we're a football channel, but I think that a fan, I mean, is Spurred On and Chelsea fans channel and Full Time Devils, are they fans channels? Yeah, absolutely. In the same way that Robbie is? Because Robbie's... Why, why would they not be? Because well, what you're saying there is the authenticity. No, no, argument. no, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Robbie was a fan, mm -hmm. right, who decided to go to Arsenal because he thought that there was, uh, he'd like to go and give fans that opportunity to speak and to kind of provide a different view. Mm -hmm. And he went and did that starting at the ground floor. Uh, Paul and Chris went and did that very same thing because they were passionate about Liverpool. They didn't think that what, what was served to them out there in the world was kind of, um, uh, good. was good, yeah. yeah. So they wanted, to, and they started doing that in their, I think in a room in Paul's house. Yeah. Now they worked whilst they were doing that. There's also channels that are, you call them fan channels in this context, who are people which are production companies that have essentially seen an opportunity to make money in YouTube and make and what they're doing is they're essentially employing fans to kind of to create, real fans. to create fan content. Yeah. But what I'm saying is it's difficult to to uh, to to put people like Robbie to the same standards that you're putting a company like Why? Fremantle because Fremantle right have got vast resources. They're an international company that's worth billions. They've got legal teams that, and, and they've got offices in those buildings. So they have lots and lots of different staff that can help provide all the resources and all the intelligence that can help construct something. Because for, for many years, they've been making content like X Factor and they've been making shows like that. Now these are big productions and they've got resources that allow them to certain, uh, do other productions quite easily and legally and following certain patterns. You then, so you're looking at something that's this big and then you're going to a guy who's been making content in his fucking garden, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Who's kind of like literally going, will this, will this camera work, can I do this thing? And, and that's, that's almost like the A-team used to go into a shed uh, and find a wheelbarrow and a few cabbages and come out with a tank. You, you know, they're kind of competing in those regards. Those are fan channels that are made by fans for me. Whereas what you're talking about is quite high-end production from a company that's different. So th there's, there's this, there's ways of distinguishing these companies and I think that sometimes people hold people to different standards, you know? And what I'd also say is within this space is that 
Um, I think it's more of a YouTube thing, you know? So I think that you look at um, people like KSI who are amazing and are very talented, getting a lot of brand money. There's times when they do things on their journey of evolution that are kind of maybe do the name of YouTube as bad. I mean, I, I get what you're saying broadly, but there's, well, there's a lot of, I mean, I, w I don't want to go into it, but there was this whole thing where uh, it was very juvenile, it was something about it taking, you know, it was something about rape or something yeah. like that that could then reflect badly on, on YouTube. And it did. You know. I mean, let's, let's well, be completely honest. Well, it, it did, did, but has yeah. it, it stopped brands and people coming into Has it stopped KSI? You know, he's, he, it's not done. No, but what I, and I found this sort of with the True Geordie podcast was um, people were very unquestioning about what he said as long as they thought that the brand door was open. And as right. soon as the brand door closed, that was when people jumped on the moral right. bandwagon. Right. And I'd never really experienced that before because yeah. I was, I always found myself on the side where I'm quite eloquent, I'm, you know, I've been to I've been to university. And I've, I've you know got a degree in media, and so I, 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 I tie a lot of people up in knots when they come to talk to me about it. But my point with that was, as soon as someone, as soon as someone found, oh, hold on a minute, there's a, a brand that doesn't want to be associated. Happened? Yeah, I don't want to say with who it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was there were there were people out there who went, you, oh, we we don't want to do this because. Um, yeah, so the first week, someone go, go great numbers, amazing, mate, really good numbers. Mm. The next thing we know, it's. Oh, can't well, say that. sorry, mate. We you can't say this. You can't yeah. say that. And and it w it went from you know very open relationships with someone to not. And he's got no problem with me saying that. Yeah. You know, he's basically said you know. But is it not his it. podcast? So can't I just say no? What it is. He wants? It is. But then and that's true. But then there are going to be other people who obviously approached us about relationships or sort of like you know can we appear or yeah. you know can we be and they listened to it and have gone fantastic. But then as soon as someone else has listened to it and gone, um, oh god, that mm. oh, we we couldn't do that as a brand. Yeah then they've gone, oh, we can't do it then. Hmm. And the mo then the morals come out. Well, this is where Spencer has, I think, been fantastic because I think he noticed a lot of the juvenile stuff. He noticed people doing illegal things with, with coins, coins for, yeah, for FIFA. Possibly. And what he did is he created a very clean product. And he worked, I mean, let's not mistake the amount of work that goes in. And again, this is people that are employed and on the clock compared to someone like Robbie. Oh, or, no, or, no, or, I, mean, I mean Spencer. Or, or, or someone like Spencer. Spencer was a very different one though. Because but Spencer's Spencer, putting it, well, what I'm saying is that there's a lot of hard work that goes into it when you're building a channel But that, that's my point, is the distinguish, maybe the distinction that you made about fan channels and fan channels, and I find that I find that quite, uh, there's, a, there's definitely a blurred line there because. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying though? I understand that, where you're yeah. coming from, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't then hold Robbie to a high standard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or I shouldn't hold Paul to a high standard. Uh, of course. And Paul and I have sort of had that conversation yeah. before because I, Paul and I have worked together a lot in the past. And he knows, and Chris especially knows, I have a lot of respect yeah. for what Redmen have done as a yeah. local fan. I've watched the channel yeah. and I really appreciate what they say. But in the past, uh, we've had sort of stand, sort of conversations about standards or conversations mm. about what people want to see and those sort of things. And we fundamentally disagreed. And what I always find interesting is that actually we can, it doesn't mean that Paul and, Paul and Chris have always stuck by that. They still hold themselves to high standards in terms mm. of what they want to put out. Of course. And I don't think that means that you can't, you know, just because. I don't think it's mutually, I, I don't think that you should, just because it's hard that you should forsake quality and you shouldn't be mindful of someone's health or balanced opinion. Absolutely. And I'm saying these, not saying these things but are I, mutually, I got, I, I'm not saying these things are mutually exclusive. All I'm saying is that for someone like Robbie who, was doing a day job and then would go to a football match and would work to three o'clock in the morning to get these things out and it was just him and Tao and they're doing the best just to get the content turned around, edited and uploaded and tagged. That's different to a business who's got lots of different but people now what's Robbie's job? What's Robbie's job now? Full time YouTuber. So what I'm gonna what I would say about that is it's all well and good where Robbie came from, but now where Robbie is <laughs> and where Robbie was working to is unfair because Robbie's not here to answer this. But yeah. the, uh, but Robbie essentially did have his say last week, and I got very frustrated listening to the podcast because you guys didn't That's put him cool. to the sword at all. Mate, yeah, and but, I yeah, thought, but, 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 but look, look I, I get you, mate. But it's not like we're sitting in a court of law and actually. Robbie's balls are on the line and it's our jobs just to make sure that we take Robbie and we find out the, the things that are in your head. We had an hour to chat about a whole load of different no, no, but, and, that, but that's, and that's what I'm saying. But I'm, what I would say is with it is that now now Robbie is a... <laughs> your face, it's happening. But now... It's now happening. I've, No, but, it's not. It's not. You know, it's, it's an interesting conversation. As soon as you want to be involved in that space, then I think that... And it's almost like a fraternity in that sense. And that's always what I find hard is that especially in creative jobs people are more than happy to go along with things until the apple cart gets a little bit rocked or until something goes wrong. So for a very long time, especially in YouTube, people go, mate, come on for free, will you? Or like, come on, you know, come on, mate. And so if I, if I, 
expressed any doubts or expressed sort of anger about someone saying something they go oh come on mate why are you being like that mm. but then it gets serious and into money and people begin to discover hold up we can't make money of that because of what we've done in the past all right well we'll drop that side then and we'll mm. pretend that never happened and to some extent that happened with you know certain youtubers who dropped the content about you know what well, a fuck a girl or whatever however you want to put it <laughs> they dropped that 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 went you yeah. know and it became cleaned up yeah. and it was as soon as people realized they couldn't make money about it and so i find like a gross hypocrisy about that that mm. until someone will do that to get up but then they'll drop it as soon as the money comes yeah. out it's the same as anything though isn't yeah. it? it's like it's like uh you, you, hear, you hear people yeah who, who, they kind of come out and then they realize it's not it's not the way to make then you're money. not a voice for the people you kind of go mainstream don't but you, you sell but, out but you're not a voice for the people like in that sense. is that why you looked at them well no it's just like it's slightly it's very down. i mean slightly, slightly down you want to put them down slightly yeah down. Okay. i mean but my point is can we edit that out craig yeah. <laughs> my, my <laughs> point joking, is, we can't but, edit it but out. my point my point is like the the fan channels and that's what was the problem with the last american election was that the voices weren't properly heard you're saying robbie's like trump is that what you're no saying? no i'm saying the opposite <laughs> i'm saying what robbie what, what robbie wants to be and what robbie wants to represent is fans but so that has to come to a point where you help the fans synthesize their own voice and you help them make a more intelligent point. So all well and good I say, like it's the same, Robbie is not TalkSport or Robbie is not Five Live. And I sometimes feel that Robbie is different to those guys because I love watching, there are certain fans that I love watching on Arsenal Fan TV and on uh, Red Men and you know, all those other channels because they've got very good eloquent points to be made. But there are times where people don't take a breath and I feel that takes away from their voice because the big guys can go, just an angry guy. And that's what, essentially that happened a bit at The Guardian on that podcast. They went, they love getting someone a bit wound up and it allows, and, and those guys were joking a bit. I listened to all those podcasts where, and I remember thinking, God, I know Robbie, I feel a bit sorry for him because he's not quite getting his say here. When I was listening to The Guardian, I was mm. cringing. I was like, that's, that's bad because actually I know what Robbie wants to do and I know what he's aiming for. And I felt bad for him that it was just these guys at The Guardian sort of ripping the shit out of him and he didn't really get a reply. But at the same time, I don't feel like the reply properly addressed what the Guardian were actually getting at, which was that it did sometimes feel a bit like Robbie or whoever else was giving someone you know the, the 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 space to express something and say something that maybe wouldn't portray them in the best light and that's what i and robbie robbie's replied to me about that and i know he gets a little bit frustrated when people make that point because what he wants to do is give people a voice but now he's part of the industry there's people in the industry like me saying great then let let me help let anyone else help let real producers help who have studied this and we want to help give arsenal fans a voice so engage with it don't just go no i'm right i know what i'm doing we'll move on like that's what I'm saying is there's people yeah, reaching I, out with Wall Street and everywhere. I mean, look at look at um, look at Talksport. I mean, Talksport exploiting fans by providing a phone in where they can pick up the phone after Absolutely. the game. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that's something that's been been going for many years. But then we challenge that's, it. That's, challenge it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not my place to challenge but it. But it is. You know You're I mean? Wall Street. You are. You own a company which is fundamentally and started. And you know, you and I were at the very beginning. And we I was were. like, I edited the first videos. Like the pilot, the never them, seen before pilot, and which will never be seen. No, I'm going to put. I want to put. I've decided. I was thinking about this the other day. <laughs> I want to put. I want to put this up. Great. So, so it's, it's, the pilot was uh, Adrian Durham. Yes. Ian Wright. Yeah. Green screen, green screen. With, it, with like a so Sky Sports, no. with like a Sky Sports News. It uh, wasn't like a Sky Sports News. It was a. It, was. it wasn't. It was actually like ESPN. Pardon the interruption. Sure. Yeah. Actually, yeah. thank you. Sky Sports. Well, it's no, it's not. Isn't it just? Like, you can't just graphic. because just because it's the first a it's a just because the side. first time you saw graphics on screen at Sky Sports, it don't mean it is. It was ESPN. PTI was the. was the ESPN will move take offence to that, but well, yeah. of course yeah. they will. But it's your editing. No, yeah. I've, but it was good. We'll, we'll put, <laughs> I didn't ever edit. We'll put that up. We'll yeah. put that up. Can I That's move on? Is a fan's we, voice. This has been Balls fascinating. To represent the fans. It is interesting. I love your sarcasm. No, no, it is fascinating. It is interesting, but um, we kind of. I just want to move on. Uh, move on you've had a tro trolling. So this is an interesting yeah. thing for me because you're you've always got trolled. Yeah, and I do as well. But I'm kind of starting to win them round. <laughs> you're not doing that some of them some of them yeah no I, I i noticed in the comments that you true geordie has his audience yeah and his audience isn't used to lawrence mckenna no until now yeah and uh, even then they're not used to him people um, every week go fucking get rid of him don't like him but that's so no of course of course so but what to, just to give us just to cheapen this all yeah what's some of the worst bits of trolling you've received what i what um I suppose there's, I've learned a lot of offensive words from uh, the YouTube comments. I didn't know what a cuckold was oh, yeah, until I, not I, long ago. Yeah. Um, and it turns out it's a man who's willing to watch his girlfriend ha have so sex with another man. People are saying that. Yeah. People say Lawrence is a cuck, and I and I um, I refute that. 
I don't First think you would all, let um, another man have sex with your missus. And I don't. Uh, and well, you wouldn't enjoy apart it. from the true Jordan. I don't think. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, you probably do want to caveat that. Um, <laughs> um, what, what I'm saying is, uh, there's especially with with the comments. Uh, what I found is there's a number. There's a lot of. There's this great different range of approaches you can take. Mm. You can go with what well, when you're getting trolled. Yeah, okay. you can be nice to some of them, mm. and some people reply and they go, "Oh, actually, I just wanted a reply." Mm. Uh, you can work yourself up a small army for a while. I think Keyboard Warrior 123 was very much for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and below every video, though, if anyone attacked or said anything about Lawrence, he was on it. He was on it. And I didn't even need to worry. And I like you know, it. Uh, and he was a lovely kid. Um, and, and then there are other people who just disagree fundamentally with what I say. So yeah. they are right wing people who just want to try and get at me. Yeah. And I quite enjoy, I just quite enjoy it. Do you engage? Argument. Yeah, sometimes. But I then I'll just leave it. And I, I never. Like, so what, what's funny not, is... Not once. So you, you'll engage sarcastically. I'll, I'll enga I'll sometimes guess. I'll engage seriously. Sometimes I'll be like, mate, it, like, for instance, we discussed politics a lot on the podcast on True Geordie, and it was like, people thought that because I was anti-Trump, I was therefore pro-Hillary. So I got a yeah. lot of, uh, like, oh, you pro-Hillary cuck. And I was like, well... <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I was sort of like, well, that's funny. That fundament is funny. That's fundamentally, that's like, uh, actually, you, you're partly showing why I might vote for Hillary is because you are part of the problem. But, oh, but then, pro Hillary, uh, yeah. that's and that's, that is just a. Funny that's got to be your bio on um, Twitter. Now. Pro Hillary, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is it alarming though that you get we get we reach the situation now where I can have someone leave a comment below talking balls or something like that and say, Flav, is, I wish you were dead. Yeah. I hope you get cancer. I, I is that had, what's been said? Yeah, not, not on Talking Balls, to be I fair. I think I actually went can through I and just, deleted them just can, the other day. I, I kept a load of messages. I might have screenshot it. One guy said, it's my birthday tomorrow. I hope you go to the top of the London Eye, fall off, your penis falls off, okay. and you land on it and it goes up your arse. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I laughed out loud at that. And I was like, first of all, you've really taken the time yeah. to think of a, but that's a, that's a very erotic situation for some people. <laughs> yeah. And and then he said it's an, my adrenaline an adrenaline filled erotic filled. moment, yeah. Because that know. climb and end of fall, yeah. you'd be, heart would have been racing. There's a lot yeah. to it. Yeah, and um, my heart would be racing so much, my penis fell off. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I then I, nice. I plunged to the ground, and I just replied to him, uh, uh, like, "Oh, thanks, mate." <laughs> and and he was like, and uh, I can't remember what he said back. I think I screenshot it. Thanks for replying. I think you're really good, actually. Honestly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks for replying. Actually, I think you're a really nice guy. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to see what you'd say. Yeah. Uh, another just guy fine. just continually messaged me the word pedo until when I replied, he went, see? And I was like, that's actually a great punchline. That's a bit like, knock, knock. But for ages, I just haven't replied. And he just kept going, knock, knock. And I've been yeah, like, yeah, don't yeah. do this one, mate. And then when I replied, he went, see? <laughs> and I thought it was quite clever. And yeah. then he brought all his other mates in to the conversation, added them to the conversation and went, see, I got him. <laughs> and I was like, no, very good. Him in no, the fair end. play. Yeah, fair but what, play. Is wow. it, what does it say about us and our society and, and on, on the online community, certainly around YouTube, when, when you, I feel absolutely nothing like, the only reason I'm talking about it is because I'm interested in what you would say. I have no feeling about someone wishing me cancer on the internet. Yeah. What, that gets what, me a little bit. Because that, you know what worries me a little bit? And I've sort of, I've lost some really special people or people who were very significant in my life to cancer recently. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the, yeah. the guy the guy who uh, was originally one of the biggest producers and a massive influence on my yeah. career yeah. died of um, cancer. Yeah. You know, so he, he was involved in Ball Street, and essentially he brought Lawrence into. The I met. Ball, I met for yeah. so the whole reason I'm at Ball Street is I met with uh, for coffee with Keith, and yeah. at the time I was quite young, really fresh faced, yeah. very uncynical, and just ready to get into any project. And he said, "Perfect." And I just the guy. I met Matt and Stu, and we were away, and I loved it, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And Keith was such an influence because he was just this really knowledgeable, excellent producer, knew how to do everything, but was also so open to yeah. a young YouTube guy going, why don't we try this? Yeah, and, he's an amazing guy and to be around. Just a lovely- Charisma. Exactly, yeah. All the football, and that was what I always found funny yeah. was Keith perfectly trod the line between- Leeds fan though, Leeds fan though. That was a real shame. Yeah. But the, the what he perfectly trod the line between someone who was very knowledgeable, but could at the same time step into a room with any footballer and instantly gain their respect. Yeah. And that was something I always looked up to because you know if you put me in a room with any footballer, most of them look at me and just think, fuck it now. Yeah. But but anyway, <laughs> Who's this pro he, di he died, <laughs> he, di he, he passed away and I was really upset about that at the time because yeah. I didn't really get a chance to say goodbye and I was sort of, he was yeah. a massive influence on my career and I wouldn't be here without yeah. him. So essentially I would have had to leave London because I was mm. I was at the end of running for people and you know, getting coffee for people. 
and that that like around those days I did some YouTube videos and I just got a slew of messages from these kids that were just like I fucking hope you get cancer and you die mm. and I just remember being like you have no idea what's yeah. going on in someone's life and I imagine there are people out there who are like great mm. I've, and that's the funny thing is that I've opened up on True Geordie's podcast told a few stories and I've probably told this story now there are people out there who are nasty enough they'll take that story and they'll they'll find just the right time to use it that they think it will yeah. upset me mm. so for instance I told the story about my flatmate not being a particularly nice guy Sometimes people below go, oh, I hope your flatmate kills you. Or, you know, I hope that, I hope he is a terrorist. And he, and I'll be like, well, oh, mm. so what, mate? Does it, it but what I'm asking, though, hate is, is a strange thing online. I don't, like, I don't think it is hate. hate. I just, I genuinely just think it's, it's just, just people acting bored. out. Yeah, they're bored, they're, 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 they're unhappy. They're, yeah, but no, but it's, it's expressed through the medium of hate, isn't it? It's kind of, it's a, it is, it's a weird one. There's, there's a really good theory, it's like a media Is it jealousy? Theorist. To some extent, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, absolutely. you know, I, do, you know, I'm. Of course. Someone's doing well. Let's cuss them. To some extent, but then that's not in every culture, is it? Um, and I, I, there was a really interesting. But it doesn't need to be in every culture. Just in order for it to be in our culture or the, the YouTube thing, it, culture. It does tend to be, and it does tend to come from areas that were colonized by the British Empire, and um, so sort of areas which is used this to be stuff you've read. Is this uh, your theory? This is no, not really. No. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll through the YouTube analytics. But what I'm and... saying is, there. It, so there's this kind of there's a there's almost a history of uh, you know just being anglicised in that sense. Yeah, yeah. And it's people who maybe aren't in England, but you know have this idea of what England is. Some some of them just call it banter and those sort of things. It's quite a funny. There are there are a lot of models you could probably apply to it. What I would say with the uh, there's a really good social theorist called Marshall McLuhan who says the medium is the message. Everyone knows that. I'm not sure that many people know what that means. Mm. But like, well, what does it mean? The medium is the message. The medium is the message. Look, there's a there's a really great theory to it, and he's essentially this guy like predicted the internet years before the internet came around. He predicted the the effects of the internet. He said essentially we won't like the effects of the internet in the end. It probably is going to end badly. I slightly agree with that, mm. uh, but I'll make as much money out of I can. <laughs> well, I can. Um, and he he essentially said there will be people who are really angry people online because they can they can inculcate themselves in this anonymity and so for that reason i sort of feel fine about it because i'm like right so psychologically i can explain what they're doing yeah okay I feel fine about no it. i get it i i don't know uh, I, maybe it's just me maybe i'm just getting incredibly thick-skinned i'm i feel nothing not a, a single ounce of in, no matter how bad an insult there's one guy who's, who's uh, <coughs> uh, 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 actually. I'm, you get a bit choked up over it, saying you don't feel very much about it, mate. I can't yeah. take it anymore. Uh, no, I'm alright. <coughs> so um, yeah, when, when I was uh, before, I, I kind of was even on YouTube, um, and, and I'm still reluctantly on YouTube. I'm not like mm. you, who kind of seeks the fame. I kind of don't <laughs> seek the fame. <laughs> that that is also that. that's that's also what I found really funny was uh, when I first started on True Geordie podcast and got you know like. Famous. 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 Yeah. Um, people start to say, "Oh, you should change your change all your pictures to your face so that more people will follow you." And a lot of people thought that I was on the podcast just because I wanted to be <laughs> famous. So they were sort of like, uh, you know, if you, well, mate, if you want to put on more followers, like, I don't really, I don't really want to. Like, actually, I'm doing the podcast because I enjoy doing it. Like, everything else is sort of a side thing from that. Do mm. You know, I find that really weird when people assume that you're on YouTube. Because that's your only motivation is to be famous. I think it's, it's going to change it's a, it's my a, picture. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, you get some followers, mate. I think it's not <laughs> understanding the medium, and, and and there's the rise of fat. One one thing I did find, and I was concerned about when I first started the phone Cop Pod. Um, another plug. That's all right. Yeah, yeah that's cool. well, it is my podcast of course. and yours. The front three. That's sort of me. The front three. Front three, <laughs> three podcast. Okay. Um, is uh the. The idea, I hated the idea of people thinking that I was getting above my station. I was just looking at the time. What how time? Long how long have we been going? An hour. An hour. Shit. Well, I. Uh, go on, keep sorry, mate. Go on. Let's... Yeah, because not not like I have spoken much in this last hour. It's a really good point, oh. actually. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, long the... board street. <laughs> um, he actually thought that we did that. We did. That was our voice. Line. That was the. Oh, fuck L- long. Long. the crusade. Yeah. Long. yeah, one of the issues I had was that I thought that. Other fans, other Spurs fans, thought that I was, all I was doing was trying to was yeah, using okay. Tottenham to, to to propel myself into this career in football media. When all it was mm. is that all the other Spurs fans, uh, Spurs purposes were shit. Yeah. yeah, and I thought I could do it better. And, and you that did. Was it. And I did. Do you have the biggest Spurs-based podcast now? It's hard to gauge, but I would imagine so. Yeah, Even between us and Spurs, Spurs show. But pe- people can only well, that was the only thing that ever got me. People is what can I'm only saying. conceive based on their experience and their perspective as far. And yeah. so, to some extent, so you people, forgive them for that. People judge things according to what they've learned or what they've seen or how they've interpreted things. And a lot of people have 
bad things happen to them or they don't have a good situation so mm. they're going to judge it according to that and yet on the one hand you look at it and think what are you fucking doing but on the other hand like you say you you, you can understand it you it's can sad. intellectually you can understand what's happening even though you maybe don't it agree feels like with a waste, it though. it does feel like a waste of human resources although you could you know you could rebrand YouTube sometimes as that but like well, the, if, if people put uh, some of the energy that people put into I it with it. this you know, if they put those hours to something <laughs> <They're all right>. <laughs> constructive, there's some creativity, Incredible. there's some great yeah. humour, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you just got to find your way of mm. of doing that, and and that's the great thing about the internet. That's the great thing about YouTube. That's the great thing about social media is that the the tools are now there. I mean, you go back 20, 30 years, people didn't have these opportunities. People have to, alive. people would have to train to be a to try and be a lawyer or go to education or, or learn a vocation. But now. Based on your personality, based on your creative talents, your flares, your passions, you can start to to build an audience, not just to fucking be famous, but because it's something that you enjoy doing. But what let's not let's not pretend let's not pretend that there aren't certain people who um, who or certain people who are favoured. So YouTube is still predominantly sort of approved faces. Do you know what I mean? So it is like it's a thickening, but I don't think it's quite a dem democratic voice yet. Have you seen it? It's actually happening to for the first time. You're seeing it happen to big YouTubers, really huge ones, PewDiePie. KSI, you can see the impact their fame is having on them through their videos. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, and it's it's worrying. It, it's worrying not because I think that that's going to happen to me. It's certainly give worrying. me an example. Well, okay, PewDiePie. Um, PewDiePie. He he. He loves him. He, he so he was built. Everyone knows who he is. He built his he built his career up through playing computer games and then Minecraft. Was it? Was it Minecraft? Was it? I think. Minecraft. I've never watched PewDiePie. You just threw out a computer yeah, game. Yeah. That, that's helpful. <laughs> 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 yeah. Gold Knight. That's a great game. Great game. Yeah. Yeah. Mario Kart. And the <laughs> Mario. Tetris. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, Road Rash. Yeah. Oh, that is a good Two. game. Two. Yeah, with the chain. Yeah. yeah. So he's, he, he kind of built up this career and became massively successful. And, and you can imagine mentally how difficult it would be deal, how to, how difficult it would be to deal with the fact that so many people were watching you and you was so much an influencer that you could literally change the way people think based on the whim uh, just a, a way you felt that day I mean mm -hmm. you're that powerful and that's a freakishly thing it's almost you're controlling the minds of millions at a, t at a time potentially potentially yeah but in his head that's very real so it's gone such control for so it's, a responsibility. it's gone from it's a responsibility and whatever it is that's fine the mm -hmm. point is is it's gone from making content to it all being about agendas and beef that he's having with other people on the internet that is a bit boring I find that all quite uh, it's quite revealing but also quite boring like I, I get a bit bored of it. it's you're like play Minecraft mate <laughs> I would rather extent. that I yeah. would rather that because that's yeah. what he was good at and, it, and it, ultimately their ego consumes them and it's it's you can see him mentally um, it's my opinion but it is yeah. watching it and I'm thinking this guy Someone needs to save him from himself because he's having a Britney Spears moment. Well, he's having a Justin Bieber moment, and no one can become that famous. And it, it's not normal. Yeah. And our brains as human beings are not yeah. equipped to cope. There's nothing. Yeah. If you look back in the history yeah. of the evolution of man, there's nothing that prepares a, a man to yeah. be looked at by a million people yeah. at once. It, it must be difficult when all of a sudden you know you start to think, "Am I only getting this because of I'm famous?" And we've spoke a couple of podcasts ago. We were talking about Conor McGregor mm. and what life. You know, for him, who's now not only a really famous sportsman, but he's kind of on a pedestal above to the stage where Kanye West waiting backstage to kind of just meet Ronaldo. Him. Ronaldo drops into his training. He's now, you know, so he's now even on a pedestal up there. It's like you're almost lawless in a way, which is kind of exciting. But but, that, but, that, but, but you kind of, in a way, do you need constraints in order to? It must be hard he, when, he does when, still when operate you're within those. So he still operates within the constraints. Essentially, it's just that what he's actually using those constraints to exploit those for his own ends. Because what he so does, you're is talking about his political battle with the UFC, or you, what you're talking. No, about? no. Well, I mean, to some extent, you could put it that way. But also, uh, you know, it, it, he's the only one that can do that. If all the UFC fighters did that. It would just it wouldn't be the UFC. Well, do you it, know what I mean? It, so that's my point: is that you know you the you know you can't. If everyone was like PewDiePie, it wouldn't work. So, to some extent, it can only really be him that acts in that way. It can't be every fighter that he's, acts. Yeah, in yeah, that. yeah, he's taking it to the. No one's saying it is what we're saying. No, is but like, I'm saying it, when you're fame and that gets so out of control, it's kind of. It, it must be. That will come hard to, an to end, get though. indulged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it must be quite hard to lose. A, to, to maintain a grip of reality. I you think know? there'll be a lot of casualties along the way, and I, I do think you're right to some extent. Well, like, you left the, one on Saturday night, eh? There was one casualty there for you. Yeah. The, the, the problem is. Uh, <laughs> just trying to get some humour into it yeah. um, 
the, the, the part of it is that actually we're sort of moving towards, you know, being really interconnected with other people and those sort of things. And I think partly the celebrity that comes with that is the old generation mixing with this next generation, mm. that there are hubs where people head to, but in the future, those will be more, they'll be, they won't be people, they'll be sort of ideas and those, and that's the difference between a Ball Street channel where that's like a logo or whatever, or like a Batman sign, and PewDiePie the person who has become less of a person and more of like a phenomenon or whatever mm. you want to call it. Yeah. You know, so that's the problem with that, I think. I've heard of um, one particular YouTuber, a famous female one, and essentially this company that I know, an agency was working with her and that she, so she's paid money to essentially appear at something and mm. meet people and do stuff. This someone who went missing um, for a few days. Do you know what, I don't, I don't know these people's full life sure. story at all. I just know that it's a famous one, so I don't know what, all of the shit what that happened? she's done. But essentially, like they're there, she couldn't get out of the car um, because she was kind of anxious and needed oh. to, to essentially take. Um, Is that I forget what the um, anti anti the, 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 the whatever stuff feel good the pill? Well, give me a name of it. Do you mean the stuff called, they're called anti? What are they um, called? They stop well, from your heart from going. Really? You mean the stuff beta blockers? Beta blockers. Yeah, yeah, she needed something like that just to kind of get out of the car. And it's snooker kinda... players also take those. <laughs> they yeah. do. And yeah. snipers. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Thighs of pen. Go on. That's well, that's it. I'm saying is that it's a it's terrifying. It's, it's a lot. For all of a sudden, they're making kind of you know videos yeah. in their bedrooms, and then the next minute, they're a phenomenon. It, it comes. It's a, it's a transition that's quite difficult to cope with. Isn't I it? think actually going back to McGregor. That so Lawrence, are you going to be okay? Because that's obviously where you're heading. That's obviously what's happening to you have, now. Have you, have you have you felt an, a, any different like emotionally about different? Yeah, yeah. Have you felt any additional pressure, or does it feel any different being knowing that? You've got 150,000 people watching what you're saying. Does there have been like some weird moments. Like some people go, uh, what is quite funny is, you know, I've got a, like, I'm obviously I've had a girlfriend for quite a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Brian started ripping me about that. And um, after that, they were like, Brian's weeks. a true Geordie. Brian's a true Geordie. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> weeks, for weeks after that, people would post below the, my pictures, oh, you better make the most of her before she leaves you because you're punching above your So people would, weight. from hearing that, would then go and find you in other find places. Find me on Instagram. And there would just be kids who were just like, you're not nearly as good looking as your girlfriend and these kind of things. Right. And obviously, like that that's something that you can sort of laugh off. And in the relationship, we'd... we'd, we'd Same like, people are banging on about Trump and let's face it. Yeah. And I was <laughs> He's a bit, punching in that regard. Yeah, what, what, but what I was a bit like, well, about. I just... I remember we sort of sat and looked through them and was a bit like, well, this is quite funny. But I thought that could be really, for, yeah. someone, who's, yeah. for someone who's ugly, this might be really bad. Yeah. Luckily, but you're not ugly. Luckily, I'm beautiful. beautiful. No, but you know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, everyone's got their insecurities and those sort of things. Um, no, that is a horrendous thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's really, uh, yeah. it's just really weird. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because actually, I, what I do know is that any time that any guy sees any other guy, no matter how that guy walks down the street with a really beautiful woman, a lot of single guys that I know go, how do you get, how do you get her? Yeah. What a lose? And I know that from being a single guy yourself. You look at the woman, you look at the guy, and you go, something doesn't add up here. I'm better looking than he. Do you know what I mean? Because m m loads of guys make that. And yeah. every celebrity relationship, though, we got it on a very small scale. We don't need to do that. Because of... Because of that. We just go, um, we just go, congrats, mate, must be a cool guy. No, but there's yeah. a lot of kids out there who maybe want this. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see this happening. No, look, it's, got it. it's, it's, it's a weird one. It yeah. is a weird one and it's horrendous. And I did actually think that when I was listening to it. And I'm sure, George, I'm, I don't pretend to know anything that Geordie thinks, but he's when he's listening to it, I don't think that he would have and he wouldn't have said it if he anticipated people would then do yeah. that to you on social media. Uh, we both <laughs> found it quite, we all found it quite funny. Like everyone sort of laughed about it. That's what I found quite yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So what, in a similar regard, so one of the ones that makes me laugh is when um, there's a hot girl or some, you know, check out this is this girl that, you know, I know or so and so. And then you'll get that guy that blatantly can't get her, you know, going, yeah, not my type. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I won't be interested in that. It's like, look, mate, you haven't got a girlfriend. You know what I mean? <laughs> You'd trust me, you'd be like a rat up a drain pipe. But you know, wow. But when I see it, but when yeah. I, it's just like being back with Geordie. Yeah. <laughs> but when I see it's that, an expression. Like, yeah. when, when, my, when I see my friends, that's one of them's like that. I'd never say, yeah, whatever, mate. I, was, I already say, yeah, you're right. Because yeah. you know where that's coming from. It's their own it's insecurity. insecurity. Yeah. Well, no, it's also their own perception. Say, I mean, yeah, no, you're right. But you can see that as an insecurity. It's also that his end goal might not be ever to uh, date a really beautiful girl because maybe he's got different life aspirations. What everyone that is, is assuming from is that we're all looking to work our way towards getting a beautiful girlfriend or getting a beautiful boyfriend, marrying, settle down, blah, done. Yeah, true. That's not necessarily true. And some people might 
genuinely feel that way. Mm. That it's like, well, you know what? I don't care. Or like, no, I actually don't get how that works. Mm. You know, I never get how you know someone like you can have such low self esteem. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> really, is it's mm. ridiculous. I mean, look at the, you. Look you, at me. What are you? You're what in your thirties. And you can still grow hair like that. And that's a massive achievement. <laughs> it's very thick as well. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like Rapunzel. Great jeans. Mm. Is that the end? It, it feels like the end. It feels fizzled like the end. a bit. Fizzled. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Go through it. Go through it. It's when you get conscious of time that you should really just keep going. You should really just go, well, let's finish. You know what I mean? Like, you should probably finish on some sort of a uh, football subject, you know what I think? No. This is my podcast. Do what I like. Football, yeah. Thanks for your comments, though. Um, do that intro bit now. Yeah, we will do the intro bit. Thank you very much for listening to The Long Ball Street once again. Lawrence, thank you so much for coming down. Thanks Next week, me. Trish Hardy's on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you paid that booking fee. Oh, wow. We would never pay no. that booking fee. No. Oh, we'll pay. Of course we're not. We're not. A, we're not I'll pay. Them. Um, I'll pay. Who's been the best guest this series? You. Best guest? We were you. Yeah. You. Righty. Righty was good. I, Dubes I, was very good. I, lo- I love yeah. the right. I think the Jubilee podcast always stands out yeah. for me. It's Why? just because he gave it. He gave so much. I fucking love Jubilee. Well. The, the stuff about Woodgate Boyer. Yeah. And, and he's a lovely guy. Woodgate Boyer and him giving up information that I've never heard of heard about that case. So to him talking about Woodgate breaking down in tears and the moment he had to tell him, I've got to change my story. I've got yeah. to tell the truth. Yeah. Because the barrister said, "Look, you don't. You're that going to prison." Good. Yeah, yeah. I and I, and I sat there and listened. I was like, "Fuck, that's mm. amazing." I mean, it's amazing. And he had a kid, and and that's an extra layer of pressure. You know, you can't be um, honouring some stupid thing when you're like, yeah, you've yeah. got a bloody child, and you, you know, I'm coming to that soon, and you already you start to feel different because you just think, I need to, I got to sort stuff out. You know, yeah, yeah. I can't be uh, living life by, by whim anymore. I can't just take off and do that or go there and do that spend loads of money on that because ultimately you've got a a child's a bit like the world cup isn't it or a bit like a european championship a child yeah so having a baby is a bit like preparing for a world cup or something like that so you're a bit like brazil or south africa actually you're not you're more like say a world she's more like um brazil Well, she's, her family's got, she's got Brazilian. No, no, I mean, you're really not understanding the analogy. Um, the, <laughs> it's, it, it, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah. A child can wait once every four years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and essentially it's that every, is probably a really good way to approach it's, it's it. It's every minute of every day. Um, what I'm saying is it, uh, the it's very intense during that time though. But the, the thing is, you're probably more like a Germany preparing for a World Cup or something, you know? So, wow. because a tournament, you need to be ready for the tournament. And at yeah. the moment you're in that preparing. So you're making sure the VIP lounge is all set up or these kind of things for a tournament. You guys are doing the same. So it's essentially very similar. And you've got like a tick list of things that you need to do before a football tournament. It's very similar to no, getting I'm, ready to have I'm, a baby. I'm more like England. I'm panicking. Mm-hmm. I'm panicking. No, I mean, I'm not the host, I mean the host. I mean, I mean oh, the host, the host of the tournament. Yeah, okay. so that's what I'm saying. Like South Africa or Brazil. Or right. Let's do the England thing though, because that's yeah. going to be funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, you're a 96. I'm panicking. I mean, that was a well done tournament. Yeah. No, you're. So you're. Cool. You're. A lot's expected of you. Yeah. Shit. It is a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. The world are watching. Yeah. Oh God. Well. And uh, but oh. you're inside, going out getting pissed. Nervous. But I could get glory. You could, and you will. Who I is glory? Win. Gloria is yeah. my daughter's name to be. No, it's really. not really. Oh, that would have been. Thank God. I also love that your reaction. I didn't like it. it was like mm-hmm. I was going to say. I also love that your reaction was no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's no. It's, it's not really though, is it? No. It's I'm not. just said good. What is it? Oh, have you not announced it? Mal. No, was what it Marvel? Was that's it? That's good. It was Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. But what have you? Marvel actually. I've got a name. I can't. Is it a girl? Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's it. definitely a girl. Yeah. Girl. Oh, she's going to be a little girl, girl because they she's do, carrying low. They do tests and oh, really, they, they? they work that stuff out. Yeah. But nice. she's um. She, yeah, she's she's a little girl, man. It's not far away either. Why don't you call, let people call you Gary? Um, because my my parents could have called me anything under the sun. I know, and they picked anything. Gary. Twenty eight men last year were called Gary. 28, that was it. Is that 28 all? people. On 42 <laughs> women. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, what would, would you... I, I Look, I don't mind being called Gary. I don't mind being called Gareth, which is my actual name. God, but, God. But... You look but, nothing like that. But That's I've always been called Flav. Yeah. Always. From... from My mum called me Flav and still does to this day. Why? So it's natural for me to do that. When we started the podcast, the Fighting Cock podcast, I thought that I was going to be anonymous and remain anonymous. 
when I did the How? podcast. What's wrong with you? it was just you? audio. I, I never thought that people would figure out, or it, I never even thought it was going to be a success. Did you wear a mask? We, we used to put pictures out on Twitter with black bars across our eyes because we didn't want people to know who we you were. You thought you were daft punk on pretty the podcast. Much, pretty much. That was how stupid we were at that time. I love that. Right, is there anything we want people to talk about or comment on the, for next week or anything like that? We're yeah. just going to wind this up. Hashtag psychoflav. <laughs> Yeah, it's no, no, it's not Psychoflav, that's a different thing. Well, you're uh, well, doing that in 20 minutes. You, Loz is going to be on, on, on in the Talking Balls last awesome. week. Awesome. Yeah. Love mm. that. I um, love coming naked. I feel like you guys had a really good uh, set of questions to ask. And you've asked order. maybe five of them, Trudy, Jordy and Lawrence. Do what no, you've like. actually you've covered quite a few of these. Yeah, the just... MMA thing, how boring, isn't it? Uh, I, really I didn't want to talk about that. Connor, but we I didn't, didn't want Why well, did you want to talk about Connor? Would you ever do a watch? Should I win this pod? Are you gonna, I, this is a great podcast. I was going to do Watch Along. Yeah, I've, I would totally have done that and I thought about doing that. Jordy and I, I think. Watch, watch, yeah, along, watch yeah. along for, for fo- uh, boxing would be, uh, and, and MMA. MMA would be quite the a, MMA would be awesome um, because you have these moments where all of a sudden you're like, you yeah, know, I was like that, that for the whole time. Exciting thing. It. It's, um, but yeah, he, he's the most. He's, there's he's, a he's the new Ali. He's definitely. He's not the new Ali because there's no, the yeah, there's no social movement behind him. He's not a suppressed guy. He's not. He's not part of a minority. No, I'm not believe, saying he is exactly that. Muhammad Ali and he's recreating the same thing. What I'm talking about, he is the most enigmatic, charismatic name that transcends the sport. He is the this generation's Ali, and it's funny because this is the year that Ali um, passed, obviously, yeah. and and this is kind of and Connor's actually kind of transcended the sport in 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 such a, a mad way. But, it, but it's incredible because what, what Ali did, and, and this is a similarity, I, I get what you're saying about you know, why they're different, but what, what's beautiful about Connor as opposed to 99.9% of the population and what him and Ali both have in common is that they put themselves in a position to fail. They put themselves in a position where they've created so much pressure on themselves, like the predictions, like with the loud talking, with the with taking on the challenges as they as they did, like you know Ali taking on Foreman and coming back and getting into fights that he kind of shouldn't. And the American government. That's what Connor's done. That's what Connor's done. That calculated (laughs) risk. But it's a beauty. But but to actually do that and to put yourself out there like that and to create that kind of pressure and to then not fail, I understand. Yeah, but it's phenomenal. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, Can we can we end? Can we, okay. What was a movement though, wasn't it? Thanks. <laughs> the end of the fighting cock podcast. The fighting cock? <laughs> Who are you? I don't know, I'm falling today? apart. This is, I thought this was, a, I've quite enjoyed myself. This podcast would have been better with just me and Matt this it week, would. I feel. A lot, I would have happily, uh, uh, don't know what to say. What's the that? end of the fight. You're all right. You're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. You you better cut. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. Flav, are you okay? Yeah, it's the end of the Long Bull Street podcast. Get, get, go get his tablets. Li- living it long. Living it, live it long. long. we got to do the intro now. That was yeah. fun. All right, I'm going to go to the toilet. Oh, okay. if you don't mind. Sorry about that. Uh, leave Thanks. a review. This is Long Bull Street. We'll see you at the far post. And the front post.